Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. My dream before I embraced Islam was to win the heavyweight title, heavyweight championship of the world, yeah. to become a top heavyweight boxer, and to win a world title. Mm -hmm. But uh, that was my that was my dream. Mm -hmm. make sure we attract, we hit our target audience as well. Do you understand yeah. what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Because trying to, it's a matter of um, not trying to wash our Islam down, yeah. but at the, time, the same time making them understand things in their correct context. Exactly. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. everything needs to be understood in its correct context. And this is one of the big problems we're having now. One of the major problems is people not understanding when certain aspects of Islam are to be applied. I was celebrating my 17th birthday. Of course, as, as a Muslim, I don't celebrate birthdays, but before Islam, I used to celebrate my birthday. It was my 17th birthday, and everybody was handing me different gifts. Some halal, some haram. <laughs> you know? And there was a young lady there. We called her Fifi. I did not know she was a Muslim. She was from Oman. Mm. She gave me a second-hand copy of the Quran. Now, think about it. Yeah. I always, of course, it's from Allah to become a Muslim. It's from Allah to get Hidayah. But this is how great the Hidayah was, how merciful Allah was to me. Mm -hmm. You would never ever give a person a second-hand gift for a birthday. Who does that? Yeah. A gift. No one gives second-hand. This is an insult. Yeah. It's like leaving the price tag on a gift that's cheap yeah. and giving it to somebody. In England, exactly. we never do that. Yeah. So in England, you would never give anybody. I don't think anybody would give a second-hand present. She gave it to me. And she gave it to me without telling me what it was, without explaining anything to me. Uh, so either she, uh, she gave it to me almost as if, subhanAllah, when I think back, like she was in a trance. Mm -hmm. You know, like somebody who's sleepwalking. Yeah. Somebody who's walking in their sleep yeah. comes up and gives yeah. it to you. And I remember taking it from her and thinking, okay, thanks. Yeah. I didn't think anything of it. I was reading books, but I wasn't reading religious books. I was more into political, black political books. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was it. Then I, I read it, subhanAllah, um, I read it eight years later. As I turned each page, it's like, wow, Oof. is this good? Mm. Yeah, okay, yeah. Oof, wow, Oof. whoa, mm. whoa. I mean, that's really, I was just more and more into it as I turned each page. Yeah. It's like, for the first time in my life, I nourish my soul. Mm -hmm. You know, you feed your body, you eat food, you drink, yeah. you sleep yeah. and you're tired. Yeah. But for the first time in my life, my soul had been given that which it desired. Mm -hmm. I never looked at any particular pillar mm -hmm. with any fear or trepidation except fasting. The fasting, yeah. The fasting was like, okay, no food or drink. Yeah. Now this one scares me. I'm very scared about this. What's, and I'd ask all of the Muslims, oh, what's it like? You know, don't go without food and, you know, what's it, come on. I, I, I just kept asking. Mm. And I'm very pleased to say that I now look forward to Ramadan the way I used to look forward to Christmas when I was mm. a little child. Mm. It's very yeah. excited. SubhanAllah. Now, now we talk about it. Now, not long now, yeah. two yeah. weeks to yeah. go. Oh man, I can't wait. We get really excited. Yeah. People ask me, what was your religious belief before Islam? And I say, I was, I swung between being an agnostic and mm. being an atheist. Mm -hmm. I say this jokingly. If yeah. I had no money, yeah. I was no money. I'm an atheist. There's no God. Yeah. If I had some money, oh, maybe there's a God. All right. Yeah. All so right. I, I, but I was not religious in the slightest. Mm -hmm. So it was very, very different to now take on board morals and but religious beliefs because I had my morals were street morals. Yeah. My friends, my gang. You yeah. Know, that was it. As Allah says in the Quran, the nations that came before you were more powerful, mm. more powerful than you. Mm. But do you find any trace of them on the earth? This really is, I mean, you really need, need to look at it in terms of hist historically speaking. Where's the Roman Empire now? Where's yeah. Greek civilization now? Yeah. Where, where is it? Yeah. Where's it gone? It's yeah. gone away, hasn't it? Exactly. These empires were more powerful yeah. than the so-called empires you see now.
Imagine these empires held control over most of the earth. Mm -hmm. Most of the earth. Yeah. Yet where are they now? Yeah. yeah. So therefore, why uh, why worry about things like this? Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think this that those those. I really don't see myself as being inferior. I don't look at it like that. Mm. I don't have that issue. Myself, you, know, you have to understand, I'm a Muslim, but I'm also a black man that mm. embraced Islam. Mm. Now, being, having been black in a society like England, mm. that in itself, if you want to go to the bottom rung of the ladder mm. in, in, in Europe or in America, mm. who were at the bottom of the ladder? Mm. So this is nothing new for me. Mm. Muslims feeling inferior or feeling victimized and not feeling successful... I understand exactly how that feels because I was black. I, mm. I was black, but yeah. my only yeah. ideology yeah. was yeah. my yes. skin. Absolutely. And to be black in the 80s in England, in the 70s in England, mm. you really did feel, you know, wow, doesn't matter how hard I work, what I do, I'm never going to get anywhere. Mm. Now, when I became a Muslim, mm. that was lifted from me. Mm. That was lifted. That, that feeling of inferiority, that feeling of, of weakness was lifted from me. So any Muslim that feels that, yeah. they need to go back and look at their religion. No observant Muslim who understands their religion will feel weak at all. Mm. Yes, there's, you know, it's unfortunate that, that Muslims are in Muslim countries, that there are, we experience difficulties. But our situation is far better now than when I embraced Islam. When I became a Muslim back yeah. in the early 90s, the Muslim situation then, the Islamic situation was very, very weak. Now look at it. Where are we going to be in 10 years' time, 15 years' time? Inshallah, better. Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah. There's a saying in England which I love. Mm -hmm. It says, it's always darkest before the dawn. Absolutely. You heard the saying before? Yeah, we, so we have it in Arabic. It's always yeah. darkest before the dawn. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Alhamdulillah, things will get better, inshallah. Things yeah. will get better, inshallah. Yeah. We just have to be patient and work hard. Hayya ala salih Hayya ala salih <coughs> Inna alhamdulillah Nahmadahu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiru ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يذلل فلا هادي له وأشهد ولا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم أما بعد All praises, all thanks are due to Allah alone Therefore we praise him and seek his help and seek his forgiveness we seek refuge in Allah from the evil of ourselves and from the evil consequences of our actions. The one whom Allah guides, nobody can misguide him. And the one whom Allah leaves astray, there is no one to guide him. I bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah alone, without partners. And that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, is the final prophet and messenger to the whole of mankind. The Prophet ﷺ said, a person is likely to follow the deen of his friends. So look to the friends that you have. A person is likely to follow the deen of his friends, so be very cautious about the type of friends that you have. Before Islam, you have your friends, you have your crew, you have the people that you move with, and what unites you usually is your, perhaps your taste in music, and fashion. This is what unites you. But the friends that I had in Jahiliya, they were people who really and truly, even though they wanted what was best for me, because of their lack of knowledge, what they wanted best for me wasn't very good, because it was always something bad. They wanted the best for me, so they would teach me criminal ways to get this and criminal ways to do that. This is unfortunate because they had no knowledge of life and what, they, what, what way I should lead my life. And in fact, many of the fitness and troubles I found myself in before I became a Muslim was a direct result of my friendships. We know the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ regarding uh, the blacksmith, the good companion and the bad companion. We've heard this many times. Hadith found in Bukhari Muslim. The good companion is like a perfume seller, a musk seller. 
And when you're with them, the smell is glorious. The bad companion is like a blacksmith, you know, works with the metal, banging away, bellows of hot smoke, water. While you're there, opportunity to get burnt, scalded, sparks flying onto your clothes. You're sweaty and uncomfortable. While you're there, you're sweaty and uncomfortable. And when you leave, you leave with a bad smell. This is the bad companion. And Allah says in Quran, and remember the day when the wrongdoer will bite his hands and say, woe to me. Would that I had taken a path with the messenger. Woe to me if I had only not taken so and so as a friend. He has led me astray from this Quran, from this reminder after it had come to me. And the devil is ever a deserter of man in his hour of need. In the past two weeks, there have been two significant court cases in this country. Two significant court cases. What was significant about these court cases was this. That the people who were given sentences ranging from 35 years in prison to 6 years in prison had not actually committed technically any crime. Except for what? Except that they were friends of those people who had attempted to commit crimes. Understand the environment that we are living in now. One of them was the plot to behead a British soldier. One of the people knew that is what they wanted to do. He didn't help them. He, he was at one meeting when they discussed it. He didn't help them. He didn't support them. He heard about it. He was sat with them and then went about his business. He's now doing six years in prison. Six years in prison. And the others who have been given sentences ranging up to 35 years were those who knew or after the attempted London bombings, those people that failed in their attempt to bomb the tubes, they went to their house. Oh, brother, you know, I have a muscular. Okay, yeah, come in, sit down, stay. Have, you want something to eat? You're hungry? You want some clothes? You want some money? They're doing 35 years in prison now. Did they do the London bombings? No. But those people who tried to do it came and said, yeah, Zakat, I need your help. And this is the situation. When I embraced Islam, and I moved from South London to North West London, I went to my, uh, I stayed with my sister for a few weeks. And after a few weeks, she wanted me out. And I was in Regent's Park Masjid. Well, lie, subhanAllah. I was in Regent's Park Mosque, and I was making dua. And I had nowhere to live. And I was making dua, and I put my hands down like this, and I felt a tap on my shoulder. I turned around. It was an Iraqi brother, Abdul Jabbar. And he said to me, I heard you need somewhere to live. Fadda, come and stay with me. Now, I would just come from Jahaliya. So I stuck for a lot. The first thing I thought was, he's convoluted. I was just, I'd been a Muslim a few weeks. I thought maybe he's gay. You know, they've been on a deen a couple of weeks. But then, alhamdulillah, said, he said, and he said to me, don't be shy. Don't be scared. Don't be embarrassed. So alhamdulillah, I went to stay with this brother and Jazakallah khair, he helped me and taught me and gave me a really good grounding in my deen and from his house, I met my wife and we went and got married. That was then, this is now. The times have changed, brothers. Do not sit with those people, I'm advising you. This day, I'm advising you. If you know somebody that believes this country is harb, a place of war, don't sit with them. Don't invite them to your homes and do not go to their homes. I'm advising you, do not sit with them, do not go to their homes, and do not invite them into your homes. I've advised you. I've made it clear to you. Anybody that holds these particular views, they are not your friends. They are not your friends. They're not your friends. SubhanAllah, how far is Allah from all imperfection? La ilaha illallah, there is none worthy of worship except Allah alone without partners. لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. There is no power or ability except by the will of Allah. أستغفر الله. أستغفر الله. قل هو الله أحد. الله صمد. لم يلد ولم يولد. ولم يقل له كفوا أحد. الله أكبر. سمي الله لمن حمده. Allahu Akbar.
I got married, and oh, mashallah, I got married how long after I embraced Islam? I think I got married. I got married the same year that I embraced oh, Islam. Mashallah. I gave dawah to my wife and she converted and then oh, I got married. Yeah. I live in Chiswick W4. I moved here 13 and a half, 14 years ago. When I came, there was nowhere for, for Jummah prayer. Mm -hmm. We had a very small basement where we did our dhuhr and our, mm -hmm. our other prayers. And alhamdulillah, I spoke to some, some people of knowledge and asked, can we start Jummah prayer? Can we do it in, in English? Mm -hmm. And how many people do we need to do Jummah prayer? So they said, it doesn't matter, the numbers, it doesn't matter. It could be two of you, could be four of you. And yes, you can do the khutbah in English. So I began the khutbah, um, giving khutbahs. This was, like I say, 14 years ago. Mashallah. In those days, there was no internet, so we couldn't even download yeah. the khutbahs. Now we can, it's very fortunate now, yeah. alhamdulillah. And uh, it's an, the building is actually called an age concern building. It's, it's for old people. They come here and do their activities. I was very fortunate by Allah's mercy. It's just been refurbished. I spoke to Jean, who manages the building, and said, look, I remember coming at the time, because at the time, because mm. imagine three years ago, the yeah. heat on Muslims was very hot. Yeah. It's hot okay. now, but it was very hot then as well. And I went and I came and I said, excuse me, we'd like to hire your hall uh, for, she said, what for? For religious ceremonies. And I'd already tried somewhere else in Chiswick. Yeah. And they told me to come along. So I went along there. And then when they found out I was a Muslim, it was for yeah. Muslims. Imagine I said, for Muslims, it's, they said, oh, it's not available. I said, wait, <laughs> wait. I said, I've not even told you what day we want to come. Yeah. So they said it's not available. When they found out we're Muslims, they said, no, it's yeah. not available. I said, you don't, we've not even said the day. He yeah. said, oh no. He was very embarrassed. Because yeah. he said no before he even knew when yeah. we wanted it. Yeah. So I came here and I was, alhamdulillah, very nervous, but Allah made it easy for us. And she was very happy and very nice to us. And we hire it from 12.30 to 2 o'clock every Friday. Yeah. And as you see, mashallah, mashallah, brothers from the local area who work in the business parks and work locally and live locally, yeah. they come and pray with us. Our brother donated the mats, the prayer mats, and ah. this is it. This is our place for Jummah. SubhanAllah. Alhamdulillah, it's, it's a real ni'mah, you know, it's a real blessing. We're very fortunate, alhamdulillah, to have Jummah prayer. Yeah. When, if we didn't have this hall, we'd have no Jummah. So yes. we ask Allah to bless it, protect it, and to give us better as well, inshallah. But we're very happy here. Ashhadu <laughs> an ilaha illallah Ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah I don't think people know what Islam is at all. I don't think they know what the Quran is. I think that they have misperceptions about now. They know the word Islam, they mm. know the word Muslim, they know the word maybe Quran. Mm. But what Islam, what Muslims and what Islam, what it stands for, no, they do not know. Mm -hmm. And it's our job to educate people. Mm. But they do not know, they do not know. This is one of the major hurdles. In fact, now you have most, you have non-Muslims telling everybody what Islam is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this absolutely. Is why, you know, in the media, you have non-Muslims, so-called experts, telling people what Islam yeah. is, and it's our job to tell them ourselves. If you were to read the newspapers, listen to the radio and watch television, you would believe that the whole world was against Islam. Mm -hmm. But if you see the people on the ground, mm -hmm. the people in the streets, common people, you will have the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. Let us not forget that the fastest growing religion in America, in France, in Germany, in Europe, in England is Islam. Islam. Mm. So therefore, this is a contradiction in terms. Mm. Clearly, Islam is not, everyone isn't against Islam. Mm -hmm. But there are certain people in very important positions mm. who want to give the perception mm -hmm. that everybody hates Islam, but they don't. Mm. I was always fairly opinionated on matters that I believed in. I always had strong views about things. See, you have to understand, I'm 40 years old. Mm -hmm. So I was born in the 60s. Mm -hmm. And in the 60s, there was... Uh, any, any, any black man or woman born in the 60s experienced a great deal of racism. Mm -hmm. So race, matters of race were a very strong thing for me. Matters of justice, it just leads on to that. Mm -hmm. Matters of justice and equality and fairness. This is something that any black person born in the 60s or earlier mm -hmm. feels very strongly about. Mm -hmm. They feel very strongly about it because they experienced injustice. So um, 
it's just subhanallah. When you when you go out and do your dawah, you just need to be just be very cautious and very careful about your dawah. Mm -hmm. See, we're very. I've always been very strict about my methods that I do dawah. When I do my dawah table, for instance, which you'll see, inshallah, I don't stop people. I don't approach people. This is very important mm -hmm. because I don't want to encroach upon their freedom or give them a hard time. I just sit and I wait for them to come to me. There's been other things like Beslan. I was doing mm -hmm. my dawah table. Mm -hmm after the Beslan massacre in Russia. Yeah. I did it that Saturday. Mm -hmm. After 7-7, I did my dawah table. After the teddy bear incident in Sudan, I did my dawah table. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow, after this Sharia law yeah. Yeah. statement by the Archbishop of Canterbury, I'll be doing my dawah table, inshallah. Yeah. So it's just a question of making dua to Allah mm -hmm. and having tawakkul, having trust in Allah and doing your dawah. Mm -hmm. You know, subhanAllah, this hadith for the Prophet if the whole of mankind and jinn mm -hmm. were to come together to, to, to harm you and Allah had not written it they could not harm you and if the whole of mankind and jinn were to come together to support you to aid you and mm. Allah had not written it they could not aid you mm -hmm. the pens have been lifted and the ink is dried so mm. we need to be very careful about being scared mm. because of what's happened in the news mm. and being very nervous or trying to change the message of Islam mm. to suit the environment you know we have to be wise but tell the truth Hayya ala al-faleh Hayya ala al-faleh Well, basically in this country, personal training is widespread. Mm -hmm. But because of my background as a fighter, as a boxer, mm -hmm. what I do is I teach boxing. Mm -hmm. So it gives me, a, I have a unique skill to offer my clients. See, most, most clients, in fact, most personal trainers, they'll do a little bit of boxing, but they don't know anything about boxing at all. Mm -hmm. I boxed since I was 11 years old. Mm -hmm. So that's, subhanAllah, 30, nearly 30 years, 29 years I've been boxing. So alhamdulillah, I have a lot of skill, plus I'm a, a, an accredited trainer. I went, I did courses and I learned a great deal. So my own personal knowledge of boxing, plus um, what the courses that I've done as well, so I'm a personal boxing trainer, which is very different from being a personal trainer. Personal mm. trainers, all they do is teach you how to do press-ups and sit-ups and general exercises. Yeah. But as a personal boxing trainer, I teach my clients how to box and how to be fighters. Yeah. And that's what's given me a unique niche. Yeah. And I've been able to carve out a nice little market for myself. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I love teaching boxing. It's a great skill. Yeah. It's uh, alhamdulillah. It's, Boxing has, there's so much more to boxing than just people hitting each other in the face. Yeah. There's so, you can, if you take out the hitting in the face piece, but keep everything else, it is a very good way of exercising. Mm -hmm. It's very good for the mind and very good for the body. Mm -hmm. That's the great thing about boxing. If you take away the being hit in the face and teach everything else, mm -hmm. great for the mind, great for the body. Now they call it the noble art or the, noble or the sweet science. Yeah. These are all of the terms because it is very, it takes so much skill takes balance yeah. it takes inter intellect intelligence to do yeah. it but throwing a punch throwing a good punch is very very hard throwing mm. six punches or ten punches or twenty punches is impossible unless you've been taught mm -hmm. it's a very very important very difficult skill mm -hmm. to teach mm -hmm. and because of the way the body needs to move and all of the angles and all of the balance and the breathing this is why they call it the sweet silent science or the noble art of boxing mm -hmm. because it's very it's a very difficult skill to learn Mm -hmm. That's why it got this very famous name. Oh, wow. yeah. It's actually started as a gentleman's sport, believe it or not. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah. Yes, I've studied with many, many sheikhs, alhamdulillah. Yeah. Um, not to the extent of, of the Talib al-Ilm, the, the very famous sheikhs that you have around the world, yeah. but each particular field of, of Islam that I wanted to work in, then I studied. So I studied about dawah. I've done short courses throughout the time I've been a Muslim, alhamdulillah, as well as organizing courses as well to teach people about how to, how to practice Islam and yeah. specifically in dawah. I've, I've focused my area of expertise, my expert, my area of expertise in Islam is in dawah. Yeah. Because this is an area that you don't need to 
be very knowledgeable, yeah. but there's a great deal of work for you to do. So you don't need to be a scholar to give dawah, yeah. but at the same time, there's a lot of work that needs to be done in that particular area. Yeah. So everything from oratory, how to, pr pr to convey the voice, understanding the use of the voice, how important that is. Yeah. That's one, one thing. Uh, understanding how to make comparisons between what Islam says about a particular matter yeah. and what uh, whatever ideology it is you're confronting says about a matter. That's also very important. Yeah. Because in Dawah, if you really want to convince people of the beauty of Islam, yeah. you need to often bring examples. Yeah. And then when they were able to compare the examples, it makes your Dawah that much stronger. Mm -hmm. So that's been another area that I've, I've stressed, I've worked very hard on. But my main area of, of Islamic work has been in Dawah. This is exactly one of the major problems. This is why we're here on Saturdays. Okay. The reason I come here on Saturdays is this. Yeah. You can either ex understand Islam yeah. from people that are not Muslims. Okay. Or you can understand Islam from Muslims. All right. Well, I read and a I'm little, a Muslim. You are I'm Muslim, Muslim, sir. Yeah, and so I read a little bit of the Quran in yeah, prison. Yeah. And it just seemed to hate the Westernized world. But be specific. Right? That's what I'm trying to say. Now, let's, let's, be, let's be specific. I, I asked you a second well, ago. Well, we're, we're going back to it. Your way, we're going No, 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 we're not. Let me just, I'll tell you why, yeah? I asked you a few a second ago, be yeah. specific, and you said, no Nike, no yeah. mobile phone. No, I, I, I'm not exactly no, 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 I'm just trying to say, yeah. if I was to say to you, if I was to come up to you and say, what you follow, what you believe, yeah. your family members, yeah. they're spreading hate. Now you'd say back to me, be specific. Be specific, of course, course I'm okay, okay, okay. Well then maybe I'm not politically educated no, enough no, to express no, myself. No, 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 you're not, come on, look, no, look. I, I you're a sharp cookie, no? you're not stupid. I'm not sure, I read you're, that. No, you're, you're not stupid, It did get me, it gets me, yeah, it does get me, it's quiet. Uh, and I must admit, the Ramadan people in there, they just give, they give to their neighbours, you know, I met a good Muslim, real yeah. devout Muslim, yeah. who used to give me food, because you have to, the neighbour apparently so. That's right. But just that, that westernised thing, that we're going wrong, the wrong way, no, and I'm, maybe we are going too fast. You, now the point is, everyone else is allowed to be critical, yeah. but when a Muslim's doing it, all of a sudden, oh, you Muslims out there, you... Oh, oh, do you understand what I'm trying to say? Am I allowed to say this? Of course you are. Thank you very much, sir. I'm going to go and read it. You take it easy, mate. Nice, mate. I'm not going to, because we... It's a good ah, ah, That's, no, 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 no. Don't, no, not at all. I explained to you, yeah? Oh, okay, go Muslims on. are not allowed to have physical contact with women that they are not related to. And that's there's a reason Very for good. I'll tell you are. Right? So no, it's, it's not, right it's not to offense. have physical contact if you're related yeah, to them. Yeah, of course. That's it. They're four wives. Is it four, am I right? No, you can only have, have you're only allowed to have four wives if, if they're you're able to, if you're allowed to, and economically, emotionally, and physically. Exactly. When you say physically touch when you're related, you just mean... No, yeah, 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 yeah. whatever. Yeah. But what you yeah, say, but all four women must be treated exactly the same. Economically. Same respect. But remember, same. remember, remember, I'm sure you can both vouch for this. Yeah. There is far more what we call secular polygamy going on. I've been running my dower table for 15 years now, alhamdulillah. In fact, mine was the first table. My first table was in Kilburn. And then I moved to another area, and I've been here for 13 years now, alhamdulillah, and I've uh, been receiving a very positive response. Assalamu alaikum. And the purpose is basically to give Muslims an opportunity to speak directly about what they believe about Islam to non-Muslims. Because obviously the media has its own opinion about what Islam stands for, and they don't give Muslims an actual opportunity to tell non-Muslims what Islam is about. So we're doing exactly what the media is doing. We're telling them what our religion stands for. And alhamdulillah, on the street, we're finding a very positive response. Salaam We're finding a very positive response from uh, non-Muslims. They're very happy to hear about the message of Islam. Very, very different from what you'd read in the papers. If you, if you actually believe what the paper said, you wouldn't think anybody would want to discuss what Islam actually is. But alhamdulillah.